Good morning. I am Dr. Prashant Mushi. We will be discussing today regarding amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So, there is an association in the US, which is called the ALS Association, where you see the degree of super specialization that we are doing in the ALS society. So, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis means it is a progressive neurogenerative disease that is 100% fatal. Progressive means once the disease pathology starts, there is no way to stop it. It is a progressive disorder and it comes under neurogenerative disorder. It means that it is basically degeneration of neurons. The degenerative process, once it starts, is progressive and is unstoppable. It is 100% fatal. So, we will uh, discuss what is the meaning of ALS. A means there is negative. Myo means muscle. A, a myo means there is no muscle. Trophic means nourishment. A, myo, a myotrophic means there is loss of nutrition to the muscles, nourishment to the muscles. So, it is a breakdown of muscles and ultimately leading to loss of muscles. Lateral means Lateral is the area in the spine where the brain tells the muscles what to do. Basically, lateral means it is the corticospinal tracts or lateral tracts that connect the muscles to the brain. And sclerosis means it's the hardening. The disease is progresses, the lateral areas harden and the signal stops. So, what does the ALS mean? ALS means that the lateral corticospinal tracts that occupy the lateral side of spinal cord they start drying up, they undergo sclerosis and it breaks down the muscles because the muscles get no more nutrition and implants. The pathology, if we see the pathology of uh, the neurons and the muscles in the amyotrophy lateral sclerosis, there is degeneration and the death of motor neurons. As you all know, there are two types of motor neurons. One is upper motor neuron, and second is lower motor neuron. Upper motor neuron is the part of neuron, the neuron that connects cortex to the spinal cord. And lower motor neuron consists of motor neurons that accompany, that are situated in uh, peripheral nerves, which connect spinal cord to the muscles. So, both of, both of motor neurons are generally uh, affected in the disorders. At some spaces, we see sclerosis of upper motor neurons. At some spaces, we see sclerosis of lower motor neurons. So, as the name suggests, it is a motor neuron disease. A broader name regarding to the findings histopathologically, we see we have named it as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Otherwise, it is a motor neuron disease which causes a progressive and relentless death of upper motors as well as lower motors. The relatives spared are the neurons that are responsible for eye movements and bladder bowel functions. So, except eye movements and bladder bowel functions, all the neurons, including upper motor, lower motors, are affected, which causes variable atrophy of uh, muscles all over the body. So, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is sclerosis of lateral corticospinal upper motor neurons as well as lower motor neurons which ultimately cause uh, progressive decay of muscles. The etiology of this disease is unknown and the average age of onset is mid 50s. So any adult male or female patients in the mid 50s or 60s started complaining of motor muscle disease, muscle wasting may might be probably a patient of ALS. It is sporadic in 90 to 95% of the cases and it is familial in 5 to 10%. So, the exact epidemiology and the etiology of uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is not known, but it can be familial. The male to female ratio is 3 is to 2, it means for every 3 females, 2 females will be affected. So, it is more common in males. And if you see the population, incidence is 1 to 3 per 1 lakh. So, out of 1 lakh, only 1 to 3 will be involved and prevalence is 3 to 5 per 1 lakh population. There are few regions as such the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is globally, but there are few regions which have a higher incidence of prevalence. One is the key peninsula of Japan 
and second is the shangaro natives of guam the reason behind this is not known but might be because of some climatic conditions or some nutritional variations or some nutrition prevalent to these areas the neurons are affected these are the two regions which have very high incidence of als otherwise across population it is only one or two per one lakh prevalence of 3 to 5 per one lakh males are commonly affected than females every year per 10 lakh people 20 to 30 people are affected so the incidence is not that much the sporadic farm is 95% and familial farm is 5% about 10 to 20% of them are associated with mutations in zinc copper superoxide disputase it is the enzyme which is responsible for clearing the toxic radicals that are generated during oxidation and metabolism they are this gene is situated on chromosome number 21 and is responsible for production of enzyme disputase 1 superoxide which causes the deficiency of which causes amyotrophic lateral sclerosis so till now we have seen that amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is a progressive muscle disease causing loss of muscles across the body sparing eye and bladder muscles because of damage to neurons the corticus spinal tap as well as nerves and maybe because of mutation in enzyme that secretes dysportes enzyme so there are many forms of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis one is limb onset that is the weakness spasticity and the uh, atrophy starts from the limb another is bulbar onset the bulb is usually second called as medulla so the muscles that are supplied by cranial nerves arising from medulla they are affected the patient starts having difficulty speaking or swallowing another is respiratory onset so the muscles of all body are spared except respiratory muscles and the patients have disability in respiring breathing and one is ftd onset there is another pseudo bulbar effect associated with lot of motor neuron upper motor neuron palsy affecting the bulb the patients are emotionally very labile when the frontal temporal period is damaged uncontrolled laughter crying or smiling is also seen in such patients there are many pathophysiologies theories associated with pathophysiology of als one is oxidative transport which is suggested by copper zinc superoxide disputase one gene deficiency that encodes for an important antioxidant protein this mutation has been seen in 10 to 20% of familiar als patients there is defect in the axonal transport and third theory is there is a glutamine glutamate excited oxidative because of excess calcium in the neuron cells there is aggregation of abnormal proteins one theory says there is mitochondrial dysfunction a caspase mediated cell death apoptosis is also one of the reasons for neuronal death associated there are abnormal levels of ve growth factor this affects the capillary density in the spinal cord meaning that the nerves and surrounding cells are less irrigated so abnormal levels of ve growth factor in spinal cord may cause death of neurons because of loss of blood supply because of low capillary density in that region the major cause of low vegf is a mutation of what is not known as gnrl giant and as the glial cell pathology which may also be responsible so these all are theories that are given for pathophysiology of als otherwise the exact pathophysiology is not known the motor nerve degeneration is triggered by death of the neuron cell the death of the cell body leads to degeneration of the cell this is called as polarin degeneration as the axon breaks down the surrounding schwann cells catabolize the axon smilin sheath and engulf the axon breaking it into fragments this form of myelin ovoid containing axonal debris and surrounding myelin they are phagocytized by the macrophages in the typical als the certain motor neurons are spared until very late in the disease process in the brain oculomotor cochlear and adjacent nerves in the spinal cord the posterior columns spinocerebellar tracts nucleus of one of which controls bowel and bladder functions 
and the Clarke column generally are spared, the Clarke column can be affected in familial form of the disease. The most probable culprit is for the research now is there are several lines of evidence support altered calcium homeostasis leading to motor neuron degeneration in ALS. Notably, the disturbances of glutamate neurotransmission and subsequent glutamate triggered calcium injury. The increased extracellular glutamate levels, probably due to reduced glyph glutamate uptake, caused by oxidative damage to EAA2 study of first ALS in cell lines, and animal mouse models where potential mechanism for calcium disturbance is inhibition of glyph glutamate transport by superoxide dismutase M similar to those proposed for ALS. So as you can see from the slide and the pictures, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a fatal disease of nervous system characterized by progressive muscle weakness resulting paralysis. Motor neurons are nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord that attach to muscles and central system. When motor neurons gradually degenerate and die, the muscles no longer receive nerve impulses. As a result, the nerve death and the muscle strengthen is weak. If we take a closer look at the healthy nervous system, we see that there is a neuronal degeneration. The basic unit of nervous system is highly specialized cell known as neuron. It has a cell body, exon, and dendrites. The nerve impulse is transmitted when the terminal fibers of the neurons exon release chemicals called neurotransmitters. The possible cause of ALS is too much glutamate. As we have discussed earlier, high levels of calcium and excess toxicity may cause too much glutamate at the level of neurons causing degeneration. The clinical hallmark of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is a mix of these upper and lower motor neuron signs. Upper motor neuron signs are spasticity, hyperreflexia, and weakness. The lower motor neuron signs are weakness, muscle wasting, fasciculations, hyperreflexia, and muscle cramps. The sensory neurons are not affected. The minority of the patients complain of some numbness and paresthesia. So, as the name suggests, amyotrophic means weakness, atrophy, fasciculations due to degeneration of muscles, denervation of muscles, and lateral sclerosis is hyperreflexia, spasticity due to lateral corticospinal tract degeneration. The most common sign is asymmetric weakness of one or more limbs, upper limbs more than lower limbs, hands more than shoulder girdle. The bulbar symptom is the second most common presentation that is dysarthria or dysphagia, slurred speech and difficulty chewing and swallowing. Upper limbs, signs and symptoms are difficulty in washing, dropping things, tripping, writing and pinching. The lower limb signs and symptoms, lower extremity foot drop, proximal leg weakness, difficulty climbing stairs and difficulty arising from chairs, the Babinski sign is positive. The later signs and symptoms, progressive muscle weakness, paralysis, weight loss, shortness of breath and respiratory failure, and dementia. Since the nucleus of onus is paired, the sphincter control is normal. The diagnosis of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is as per revised all escorial World Federation of Neurology criteria, which says that there should be evidence of lower motor neuron degeneration by clinical, electrophysiological, or neuropathological examination. There must be evidence of upper motor neuron degeneration by clinical examination. Progressive spread of symptoms or signs within a region or two regions, the body is divided into four regions, cranial, cervical, thoracic, and lumbosacral. The absence of electrophysiological, pathophysiological, and neuroimaging evidence of other disease process. So the diagnosis is essentially based on electrophysiological studies which clearly indicate loss of neuronal function and loss of muscle mass because of degeneration of neurons in non-related widespread areas of body. The lab studies that we require here are nerve conduction studies, which uh, are used to measure nerve conduction velocities in axonal, which says axonal involvement, and electromyography, which studies mix of acute and chronic degeneration features. Another investigation is MRI, which is used to rule out another secondary pathologies. So as you can see from the pictures, 
the external T2 weighted MRI scan through lateral ventricles of brain is abnormal high intensity within the corticospinal tracts. This MRI feature represents an increase in water content in myelin tracts undergoing valerization, undergoing valerian degeneration secondary to cortical motor neuron loss. This finding is commonly present in ALS, but can also be seen in AIDS related encephalopathy, infarction, or other disease processes that produce corticospinal neuron loss in secondary fashion. The clinically definite ALS is upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron signs, at least three body segments. Clinically probable ALS is upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron sign in at least two body segments with some UMN sign in segment above element sign. Clinically probable laboratory supported ALS is UMN and element sign in one segment of or human sign in one region coupled with element signs electromyography. Clinically possible amyotrophic electrosclerosis is upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron signs in one body segment. Upper motor neuron sign alone in at least two segments or lower motor neuron sign in segment above human segment. The clinically suspected amyotrophic electrosclerosis carried forward from original L scorial criteria is pure lower motor neuron syndrome with other causes of element disease adequately explained. There is a long list of diseases which uh, falls under differential diagnosis. We have to first rule out other motor neuron disorders like primary electrosclerosis, which is a predominantly upper motor neuron only, then progressive muscle atrophy and progressive bulbar palsy. Neuropathies, which include Julian Barre syndrome and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polymyopathies, myopathies, which includes polymyositis, inclusion body myositis, NM junction <coughs> diseases, which include myasthenia gravis, the neurogenerative disorders, which uh, includes Parkinson's, progressive supranuclear palsy, multiple sclerosis. Many of the malignancies may also lead to picture resembling ALS like primary metastatic CNS disorders and motor neuron syndromes associated with multiple myelomas, lymphomas, lungs and brain disorders. Now, toxic exposure, exposure to heavy metals can also cause picture like ALS, endocrine disorders like thyroid, adrenal pituitary disorders, and infectious disorders like HIV and CIV are also cause disorders like ALS. So you can see from the slide posted, it is a brain spect imaging, the transaxial and coronal images showing bilateral, frontal and temporal hyperperfusion mainly on left side. The yellow regions represent decreased relative perfusion area on the scale. So the differential diagnosis includes absence of pain or of secondary changes, normal bowel and bladder function, normal X-ray studies of spine and normal CSA. So if you want to label a patient as a phase of having ALS, then he should have no sensory symptoms, he should have normal eye movements, he should have normal bowel and bladder functions. He should have normal X-ray studies. He should have normal MRI and CT scan and CSF. And if all these criteria are favored, then he may be labeled as having ALS. The absence of weakness, atrophy, or denervation phenomenon usually exclude ALS. So the cornerstone of diagnosis of a myotrophic electrosclerosis is electrophysiological ALS is a progressive disorder with a linear clinical course. There are no remissions or exacerbations or relapses like multiple sclerosis. The life threatening aspects of ALS are neuromuscular respiratory failure and respiration pneumonia. Majority of the patients that are in the terminal stage of ALS, they die because of either respiratory failure or respiration pneumonia because of loss of respiratory drive, muscle weakness. The survival after five years of diagnosis is variable. 50% may live 3-4 years or more, 20% live 5 years or more, or 10% live 10 years or more. The treatment of choice is Rilusol 100 mg per day. It is the only available medication for treatment of a glutamate inhibitor. Compared with placebo, the Rilusol may prolong median tracheostomy for survival of 3 months patients younger than 75 years with definite or probable ALS who had the disease less than 5 years who have a forced vital capacity of 60% before and Rilusol is the otherwise textbook it is written 
Trilusol is the treatment of choice with no effect. So here is the picture of the famous scientist Ivan Hopkins. He was the patient of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. The principal clinic side effects: some patients with trilusol may experience stomach upset and asthenia, loss of energy. These problems resolved if medication is discontinued. Some patients on trilusol develop abnormal liver function tests or neutropenia. The serum level of aminotransferases should be measured before and during trilusol therapy. With ALT levels being evaluated every three months, every first every month during first three months of treatment, and then every three months during remainder of first year, periodic thereafter. Supportive treatments for other symptomatic disorders that happen with ALS should be used, like triphenoxidil or amitriptyline can be used for better symptoms if present, pain or depression may be prescribed for people with problems swallowing their saliva. One drug for celiac is lipoprotein. It is used frequently and very effective. Limb stiffness can be treated with antispasticity agents like diclofen, tizanidine. For treatment of depression, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are used. Dysphagia causes a risk for aspiration of food, liquids or secretions, which result in pneumonia, and may lead to malnutrition or dehydration and subsequent weakness and death. Symptoms can be minimized in patients. Who undergo gastrostomy, tube insertion with aggressive management and secretion. The progressive neuromuscular respiratory failure is the most common cause of death in ALS. The non-invasive positive pressure ventilation can prolong survival for 20 months. Some patients should stethoscopy and permanent ventilation. It is possible to maintain patients alive for six years with low dose syndrome. Ice bucket challenge is an activity involving dumping a bucket of ice water on someone's head to promote awareness of the disease. Aim at of it lateral sclerosis and encourage donations to research. It went viral in social media during August, July 14th. So this was all regarding ALS. Uh, probably you all have understood it. करूंगा एंड करूंगा